Ah, good Shabbos. Um, we're up to the third mitzvah, in the mitzvah of Shkulos. The third mitzvah we're going to be dealing with today is Tzidus. Okay, just to get us caught up to where we're holding. In terms of the binyan of the other, in terms of building a person. So in terms of the seven mitzvah of Shkulos, we started with the first one, which was Kfirat Abu Dazara, which was the importance of establishing a hierarchy of values. Okay, the first three mitzvahs are going to be part of one set. Kfir Babo Dezara, establishing cognitively a hierarchy of, of, of values. The second, within that same system, was tzedakah, being able to lower one aspect relative to another, being able to take from a lower aspect of importance and place and invest into a higher level of importance. Now we walk on to the third mitzvah, which is the mitzvah of tzitzis. The mitzvah of tzitzis now focuses on the asetot. How do we take the positive values we have, and how do we lift them, how do we place them primary in the forefront of our mind? Okay? So in the mitzvah of tzitzis, we're going to start with the Gemara. The Gemara says, Tanya Ida, u'item oto, u'scharitem et kol mitzvot Hashem, Shkula mitzvah zu keneged kol ha mitzvah shkula. Okay, you are supposed to see the mitzvah of tzitzis. You're supposed to see the tzitzis, and that is shakul that counterweighs all the mitzvahs of the Torah. What is the aspect of tzitzis counterweighing all the mitzvahs of the Torah? So for here in the parsha of tzitzis, we have a three a three piece uh, pro- process. Three piece process. We have Ri'ya, Zahira, and Asiya. Okay? When we see something, okay, and therefore we are Zocher, and therefore we do. Let's look at this process. What we're going to deal with today is looking at this process and trying to give very uh, very real avodos for how to work on this. Because a Ben Aliyah always and a Bat Aliyah always works on on figuring out how Lemaisa I can I can take it to grow with. Okay? So the concept of Tzitzis, which is going to be a Kalal, which we're going to apply to every to to a Kalal, to the general rule of remembering to see, it teaches us the concept of seeing reminds us. Okay? When we talk about Zahira, what do we mean by Zahira? Zahira here doesn't mean remembering as opposed to forgetting. Okay? Here is Zahira in the same way that we have in lots of other places, by Shofar, on Rosh Hashanah, okay? Zahira is not remembering it as much as bringing it to our awareness, making sure that it's in the forefront of our awareness. It's not referring to things which we've forgotten and don't remember, okay? This isn't like studying for a test and then being Zohar. This is talking about things which are, which might be latent, which are there, but are not in the forefront of our mind, are not in the forefront of our awareness. When we see something, it puts it in the forefront of our awareness. So I want us to switch thoughts from Zahira being remember to Zahira being aware. Okay? That's a concept which we have even in science. Okay, The concept of one of the most basic psychological heuristics. Okay? A heuristic is, a, is the concept of a mental shortcut. One of the mental shortcuts we have, okay, is that when there's something which we've seen risk recently, so then it jumps more quickly into the mind. When we have to react, our mind takes shortcuts and jumps to something which we which which we have a tremendous uh, which we have a, which is very similar to something which we've seen recently, to something we're very familiar with, something we just saw. Okay, so the concept of zahira is let us tap in to that koach of adam. And make sure that what we see on a constant basis is that which we want our mind to jump to on a constant basis. See the tzitzis so that you will constantly be reminded of mitzvos. And that brings us to the third step, which is asiya. If we want something to be more valuable to us, not just more valuable to us cognitively, but more valuable to us emotionally, we want our mind to jump more quickly to mitzvot, to maisi tovim, 
to meet those tovos, to react with masim tovim. So it has to be in our active zechir. It has to be in our awareness. Okay? Uitem oto. So now let's bring that lemaisa. Okay? Lemaisa, oh, or let me first bring a, an anecdotal story. I remember Rav Leichter, Rav Reuven Leichter, one of the Bali Musar of Yerushalayim, also a Talmud of Revolbi. And uh, I remember once he told a, he told a funny story. He told the story of when he got, he, he took a trip to America, this was years ago, when GPS just started coming out, and he got into a car, and the person who picked him up had a GPS, brand new, uh, he had never seen it before. Okay, you can imagine for someone who's never seen a GPS before, it's amazing. You step into the car, you get into the car, the car tells you where to go. Okay, you can even choose what voice, choose what it, for him, he said he got into the car and he said automatically he sees it and suddenly wants it. That's what Chazal say, Ha'in ro'e v'alev chomet. Your heart only desires what you have seen, what you can imagine. Okay, it's only what you, number one, what you can imagine, but not only what you theoretically and, con and conceptually can imagine, but that which is in your awareness and you are thinking about and you are imagining about, and you are medamian about, and you are dreaming about. So then suddenly something which you dream about, something you have a desire for, so the time before, something which is out of sight is out of mind. Something which is, which is on your mind Suddenly, you suddenly need. So he said he's sitting there and he sees his gadget and he's getting these feelings. Wow, I need this gadget. I have to have this gadget. This is amazing. And then he stops for a second and says, Wait a second. I don't have a car. I don't need this. Okay? This happens to us all the time. We were perfectly fine. We go to somebody's house. We suddenly see that they have something which we didn't have for. It's not until we saw it that suddenly we feel that we need it. And not because we're trying to run after them. We have a cloud. Ayin roe v'alev chomet. Ad kidei kach. That the Gemara in Shabbos says that the eye is considered halachically an extension of the heart. Because the heart wants what the eye sees. Now, not only what the eye can imagine, but that which the eye is constantly reminding itself of, constantly bumming into. When you live in a culture which there are certain needs which are raised, so suddenly you need those things. You're seeing those things. You're looking around. You suddenly need more. On the mitzvah side, right now we're not talking about the Sur Meira. We're talking about the Asetov. Let me create a situation where more of what I see are mitzvah. How do I do that? What's the avoda for that? Okay. So one, obviously one answer is you put yourself in a setting. Okay. You put yourself in a habura where more of the things which you see are surrounding Torah and mitzvahs. But let's bring, bring a more obvious example, okay? This is the why it makes a difference, for example, okay, what pictures you have on your wall. When you have pictures of your family on your wall, so you're reminding more of your family, your family is more in the forefront of your mind, okay? Out of sight, out of mind, in sight, in mind. You're, 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 reminded subconsciously as you see your parents or as you see your siblings, oh, let me call them. Oh, let me, okay? The same thing. You have, there, you have plenty of, you have plenty of, let's say you have a lot of, you have a lot of books out, okay? If you keep your sparum out and you keep your books in the bookshelf, you keep your computer, okay? When you're not using it, you keep your computer in the desk. This is not a question of how much you use it. This is a question of prominence of to what extent something is central and always in front of your eyes and always in front of you, or to what extent is it on the side and you pull it out when you need it, okay? We know that challenge. Whenever we're at home and we have extra time, we jump to that which is sitting in front of us, okay? If the fridge was downstairs in the basement, we wouldn't go down and open it every five minutes. If it's sitting right in front of you and it's on, we go to it. There's another way that we can have an abode on this, okay? Situations or scenarios which we find a challenge, whether it's in a certain challenge in a relationship we have or a certain situation, what we do is we should try to close our eyes and imagine to ourselves how we would act out, how we would like to act in that situation. Okay? Through that process of visualization, we create a re'iyah, 
which creates a zechira, which creates an asif. Finish off with the story. Okay, we have the famous story of Rav Moshe, Moshe Feinstein, with the spilled ink on the Gemara when he was younger, and Gemaras were expensive, and and someone, and one of the Talmidim by accident ink, spilled the ink from the inkwell onto his Gemara, and now it was readable still, but it was covered in blue. And Rav Moshe famously responded, "Of oh, blue, what a wonderful color for a Gemara." For Rav Moshe. That's a simple godless because it creates a tremendous, it's a tre- It's something which could be tremendously frustrating and he held back and he wasn't angry. For us, if we read that story and then we picture that story, it becomes much easier for us to respond in the same way. Why? Are we as great as Rav Moshe? We might not be as great as Rav Moshe. Our amigos might not be intuitively as great as Rav Moshe. But we have the advantage of being able to learn and visualize what Rav Moshe did. We can stop, think of the story, say, you know what? Now when the same situation comes to mind, honestly, when something, whenever something spills on a piece of paper of mine, the first thing which comes into my mind is blue. What a wonderful color. Why? Because I have that visual, visualization. Okay? The third avoda, based on the mitzvah's titsis. This is just a binyanat, it's just the example. Make sure you see, because seeing creates awareness, creates an active awareness. Active awareness causes a siyah because it causes a first reaction, a first response. Let us be more involved in what our automatic response is by creating a library of images which constantly remind us, which constantly see. Okay? Create still. Be creative in stories. Every situation which is difficult or you want to act in a certain way, play it out in your mind. See it, then you'll remember it, then you'll remember it, and you'll do it. Have an extraordinary Shabbos. Okay.